Hello everyone, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Strategic Command World War I, a new game out by Fury Software and published by Matrix and Slytherin Games. This is a grand strategy World War I game that allows you to fight the war out, and I'm not quite exactly sure what the turns are, because I think during the spring period of 1914, they're, they're, they're bi-weekly turns. Now they seem to be bi-monthly. Um, at least that's what I've been seeing in World War or in, in 1915 is it seems like my turn is June and then the enemy turn is July and then my turn is August and, and that, that seems to be the way things are going. Uh, the way things are going in the war, however, is actually pretty well. We've uh, taken Novogorsk, we've taken Warsaw, uh, we've taken a huge portion of the Russian army. We're threatening to encircle another portion of the Russian army. Uh, we're driving on Vilnia, Brest-Litovsk, we're threatening Minsk. Um, all while holding the line on sort of the, the Austro-Hungarian border, we're advancing primarily in through the Eastern Prussian border. Meanwhile, in the, Bal in the Balkans, we've just finished uh, knocking out Serbia, Albania, and Montenegro from the war, so those are all now part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Bulgaria has joined the war, as well as the Ottoman Empire has joined the war on the uh, Central power side. The Italians have just entered the war on the Entente side and are now starting an offensive uh, against the Austro-Hungarian frontier in that part of the world. Uh, and the uh, Western Front is largely stagnant. The uh, Allies are probably about to knock uh, Belgium out of the war by taking Antwerp, uh, but the actual front line with the Germans is still pretty solid and I think relatively secure. So that's the situation. We've already issued our orders. We have one more thing to do, which is to raise a new unit. Second German Corps. We're going to raise them near Munich so they can move south to support the Italian front. Uh, meanwhile, I probably need a German headquarters unit there. Uh, we have a little bit left in terms of income for the Germans, but I'm going to save that because I do think I need to buy a new headquarters unit uh, as well as maybe some other units. So we'll see what we can buy next turn. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to end the turn and we'll see what the AI has in store for us right off the bat. First Cavalry suffers attrition losses. Yeah, it is kind of out there. The loss of Novo Govor blah, 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 reduces Russian morale. The morale is already below 50%, by the way. Norway has really been complaining about Entente attacks on their merchantmen for quite some time. More units of Kitchener's army deploy for service, so that's going to give the Entente more units in uh, France. Entente naval units north of Scotland blockade imports to Germany. J.P. Morgan is shot and wounded after a bomb explodes in the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. Interesting. I had never heard of that. J.P. Morgan Jr., the German agent Eric Mün Münter is arrested for the bombing and shooting. Really? Germany develops industrial technology level one. Austria is making progress on spying and development. The Ottoman Empire is making progress on infantry warfare. And there's our money. I'm a little bit annoyed that I took <laughs> Serbia with German forces so that that money is pouring into German coffers. I would have much rather taken it with Austro-Hungarian money. Or forces. Antwerp has fallen. The British have taken it. Okay. The loser of the fight over it Italy gets them as an ally. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Well, I guess we lost, or we won then, right? Because we didn't get Italy as an ally. All right, so organized enemy operations against our uh, submarines there. Meanwhile, the Italian Navy is is threatening the, the Straits of Gallipoli. Or the Dardanelles, sorry. Meanwhile, British naval units also moving in to attack. Oh, boy. See, the Sea of Marmara is, uh, is being threatened by enemy naval forces. Meanwhile, Russian cavalry withdraw out from Vilnia. Quite a lot of naval action against our small naval units. They're reinforcing the troops in Undine, which means that there will be no counterattack heading east against the troops of ours that were attacking the enemy troops at Undine, which is actually beneficial for us, I think. It's interesting to see the enemy pull their cavalry back at Vilnia, that opens up a little bit of a gap in their lines there. I'm curious to see how we might be able to exploit that. 
Meanwhile, we've got a whole bunch of submarines that were mainly up here doing scouting duty for the fleet. But the enemy destroyers have definitely chased them down. Now their enemy destroyers are pulling back to port, for the most part. The Russian Navy remains off the coast of Tresbon, presumably interdicting the supply that's coming to our troops in the front line, since this is a primary supply and it is a port. So I do think we need to use the Ottoman Navy to kind of get them off that, because this is a very important port. You can see it's a level 10 port, and it's right adjacent to the enemy, um, enemy front line. So I'm assuming that will have a pretty substantial impact on the actual supply situation in uh, in Anatolia. Oh yeah, the rule the waves battle with my battleships. That the I that might be one of my biggest victories in rule the waves too. Meanwhile, this Ottoman core here in the front line is doomed. We'll have to reinforce our troops. The Palestinian front is not looking good, guys. The British may break through there at any moment. They're trying to break their troops out of the, the pocket to the west of Vilnia. There's a lot of British troops down here in the Sinai. There goes the Belgian headquarters unit. The Belgian infantry corps is attacked. I'm assuming they'll surrender with the loss of Antwerp. They have no supply in any event. They should just fade away into the Netherlands. <laughs> the Skagerrak schnitzel sinking. Nice. Interesting that there's a gap now at Sedan. Two Russian headquarters units to the west of Minsk. They probably have enough generals. I don't know if they have enough other soldiers right now. Contact with the uh, French fleet here. Our Italian subs, or sorry, our Austro-Hungarian subs really did, did a number on those enemy cruisers there. So far, the most decisive thing about Italy being involved is their navy is, is really cleaning up in the Met against the Ottomans. I think the straits are closed-ish. Maybe not. I probably should have mined the straits. Belgium surrenders. There goes the core. The UK gets 184 MPPs. Entente naval units continue to blockade Germany. German forces surrender in southwest Africa. And... Alright, so we lost a Ottoman light cruiser and destroyer. We also lost the 6th Ottoman Corps. And we lost the Belgium uh, army. It has come to our attention that General Weil, Commander-in-Chief of the Swiss Armed Forces, is planning to ask the Swiss Federal Council to enter the war on our side. What? Would you like to spend 75 MPPs to employ agents to encourage... Uh, support for General Weil's moves to have Switzerland join the Central Powers. Switzerland is renowned for her neutrality in European wars, yet in 1915 her most senior military figure was to call on the Swiss to enter the war. A German or Germophile, uh, General Ulrich Weil, uh, would have risked civil war between Germany, German and French and Italian-speaking citizens uh, had his suggestion been uh, met with sufficient support. If you say yes, then Switzerland will swing 15 to 30 percent toward the Central Powers. I don't really want Switzerland in the war. I want that secure southern flank. Meanwhile, we have some Alp, Alp and Mountain Corps. We'll deploy them in the south as well. All right, so I think I'm going to shift some troops around here. Um, entrench. That way we've got two defensive lines here behind Liege, now that the enemy has troops on our front there. Looks like we have level 10 troops all across the front lines. If I can... Oh no, there's defensive artillery! If I can destroy this French cavalry unit, that would be great. And use up whatever artillery ammo they might have. Got him! Got him! 
All right, so another French unit is down. It's good for us. Why are there British cavalry on the front line? Seems like a bad idea, guys. All right, let's reinforce these troops. These troops. I mean, these French troops are pretty battered. I doubt they'll attack, and if they do, they won't be super effective this turn. So I'm going to go ahead and attack there. I'm also going to swap these two units out. And attack again. Didn't quite finish him off. I should have used aircraft to scout. But in any event, we nearly destroyed the Indian Cavalry Corps. Okay. Interceptors. Escorts. Okay. What are these guys? Are these just scouts? Are they just recon? Uh, properties. Recon bombers. Why can't... Oh, I already reinforced them. That's why. All right. Okay, so I think our front line here is relatively secure. We've also got four artillery shells here in reserve. I probably messed up the attacking the, the British cavalry, but it is what it is. Um, I mean, we can reinforce these troops. The Italian line is still holding. Pull these troops back, put these, this core forward. We'll swap this core into the trenches as well. So now we have cores almost along the entire front line. I've also got some reserves. So I, I don't think there's any reason to deploy more troops to the Italian front at the moment, as long as we continue to remain on the defensive. The only thing is this guy hasn't entrenched yet. So everybody along the Italian line is in trenches and holding the line. We probably need a German headquarters unit on the Italian front, but other than that... Um, meanwhile, we'll spend... Well, I really would like to spend this turn reinforcing. Doesn't look like I can. I guess the supply levels are too low along the border with Greece. But we're going to entrench along the Greek frontier. Okay. Uh, these troops are guarding against partisans, I think. No, actually they're not. There's no reason for them to be there, so we'll move them here. I've got some additional troops we can shift around. I'll come back to that front. Um... What can we do against the enemy troops in Kovno? I hate the idea of fully reinforcing them and then sending them... I'm just trying to reduce this damn enemy garrison. There's... They're too strong here. I can't even really pull them back. They kind of have to stay there. These guys could be pulled back. So we can fall them back. Fall them back. Have them pull back. Meanwhile, my troops up here apparently are too far out of supply, so we're going to have to try and work them back out of that precarious situation because I don't want them getting destroyed. I really need to pause for a second with a lot of my forces here. I had that, that pocket near Kovno. What if we, we can't even hit Breslatosk with air yet? Right, 
These guys need to reinforce. Man, I took a lot of casualties trying to attack this fort. Didn't even really reduce it very much. I figured, oh yeah, we'll wear him down. It'll get we'll get more effective with time. Nope. Uh, I'll take Koval there. We'll swing around here. All right, so we're gonna try and close in on Breslatosk. We're not gonna quite be as direct as we just were on that other fort near Grodno. We're gonna work our way slowly wear these guys down in relatively favorable casualty exchanges. So we shattered them there. We took the objective to the south of Breslatosk. The troops that are just in front of it actually can't reinforce. Well, some of them can. These troops cannot. I think I need more of my headquarters units to the front, but this is going to be a reinforcement turn, really, on the eastern front. So a lot of our troops are just going to take a, a moment to pause and get strategic reinforcements here so we can continue the offensive uh, with vigor. Okay... Move our artillery up as well. I mean, I could try and encircle Breslatosk, but I don't think that's a good idea yet. We're also moving through the marshes, which are not great from a supply perspective. Let's do this. Let's bombard these guys. Reduce their morale and effectiveness. They are dug in, so it's only so effective. Attack here. Nice. We didn't take any casualties on that attack. No, I can't attack there. Damn it. In any event, we almost destroyed these guys too, but I didn't have enough troops to finish it off. I should have used Recon again. Recon doesn't really seem to make a huge difference, though, to be honest. All right, so I just moved these Austrian troops around this garrison here in the south and surrounded them. Alright, there's no reason to have these troops in Belgrade. We'll operate them away to the Russian front. Hmm. I think we'll move them to the drive on Breslatosk. So move them up there. Those troops will move into Graz or Belgrade itself. These Austrian troops will move to these oil fields, hoping the enemy doesn't actually attack there. And then these troops will move. I mean, we can move them all the way. Let's actually move them down to the Middle East to help against the British. Our morale is terrible down here. Why are your troops morale? Why is your troops morale so low? Thirty percent morale for these troops down here. 
Readiness actually increases with reinforcements. The morale drops, though. Why is Ottoman morale so low? The actual national morale is pretty high, but the soldier morale is low as hell. Huh. We have to send substantial non-Ottoman reinforcements that way. Mm, let's move this cavalry over here. Uh, look, look, ma, no scope. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Alright, so the enemy's trying, it seems like, to turn our flank. They've advanced a little bit into the Caucasus. Meanwhile, they are trying to cut supply to Tresbond. Supply's pretty bad. Could supply be the reason that it's, that the morale's low? No, they've got good supply down there in the Sinai. I don't know. That's weird. Alright, so we're gonna go ahead and engage the Russian fleet. Off Tresbond, they've got a sub, which we can't really do anything about, but we can hurt their other ships. So we're going to go ahead and flank wide around here and go after their Dreadnought. Then we're going to use our battle cruiser here to go against their seaplane tender. Then we're going to bring our pre-Dreadnought down to finish off their pre-Dreadnought. And we get a 700 national morale boost. That's big. All right. Good results there for us. This Austro-Hungarian uh, sub will torpedo this French cruiser and damage it. The Italian fleet seems to be out. The Austrian fleet needs to build itself back up. It's not ready for a major engagement yet. We will be ready to make a a um, sortie next turn, I think, next month. Be interesting to see if Gallipoli ha happens. Sure hope it doesn't. Uh, honestly, with these Alp troops here, I don't think I need need more troops on the Italian front. So let's send these Germans down here to the Sinai, just to, to buttress our Ottoman allies. So this was a little bit of an underwhelming turn on the Russian front. We did some damage, but not much. We had to pull some troops back, hopefully far enough to get them out of danger. But overall, we didn't really accomplish much this turn. Now the good news is Russian national morale is down below, almost below 40%. So I can't imagine they have a ton of fight left in them. The German fleet... I guess we could go for these enemy ships over here. Also nice, apparently your own ships can sail through your own minefields. Which seems right, but I didn't know it works that way. So we're going to go for the Lion Battle Cruiser. Down here. Apparently I did take some damage by sailing through my own minefield. Which I thought you could do safely, but apparently not. Go for these French destroyers. Finish them off there. Okay, so we just finished off a couple of enemy warships. We're going to pull our subs in the north back. Because they're a little bit... They're taking a lot of damage up there. Do a little bit of damage to that light cruiser up there. And we'll pull our subs further back. Alright, so... Now we need to pull the navy back, or the elements of the navy that are badly damaged back into port so we can repair them. Probably spend way more money than it's worth repairing them. Shit. 
19. Obviously, these withdrawals could be a mistake if the enemy makes a, a play to try and engage us in sort of an exposed... Oh, shit. Enemy seaplane tender out here? Okay. I still want to shield these damaged warships down here. But I also think I want to make a play. I mean, I've got sufficient strength, I, I think. To go for the seaplane tender. Got him. Enemy seaplane tender, tender sunk. God damn it, I blew up my own mind sailing through him again. I thought, oh, I'll do it. It'll be fine. Destroyers can pass through your mines, apparently. But maybe not larger ships? Okay. So the fleet is concentrated off the coast of Nor or uh, the Netherlands, and we just did some serious damage, I think, to the British Navy. We sank a seaplane tender, a battle cruiser, and a destroyer, I think it was. Okay. The Italian front. Haven't really done anything there. That's fine. I'm not ready to take the offensive there yet. The Marines at Ragusa could be moved. But to where? I don't even know where I'd move them, so I guess we'll keep them there for now. Partisans should all be suppressed. Yeah, so I think we're about ready to conclude this turn. Yeah, expensive minesweepers is right. Um, now, we do need to do some spending. So, by the way, how the, how's the U.S. looking? The U.S. still hasn't shifted at all toward the Entente, which is good for us. Norway is increasingly becoming pro-central powers because their commerce keeps getting harassed. Really, Romania? You really think it's a good idea to get involved in the war? All my diplomatic chits are mostly spent. I've got I can spend one Ottoman or one Austro-Hungarian diplomatic chit. I'm trying to keep the Romanians out of the war because not because it's a serious threat, but just because it's a pain in the ass. So I haven't swung them at all toward the Axis so far, the Entente so far, but I've got a 45% chance success per turn. Uh, meanwhile, 359 uh, income for the Germans. Can we get a headquarters unit? No, we've actually got all the headquarters units that we can raise by the looks of it. So I, I have I can't purchase anymore. I don't think. I could raise more German infantry. Cavalry, maritime bombers, pre-dreadnought battle cruisers. Fourteen turns, fourteen months, or whatever. That that's way too long for production on that. I'm never gonna build any warships. Um, I think we should probably build another artillery unit. So we'll do that. Um, I don't actually know if the straits are closed to us or if I have to mine them. Like, do I have to do take active measures to protect the straits? We'll send this Austrian armored cruiser this way. Oh, shit! No! Well, that guy's dead. The Italians are massing battleships off the Dardanelles. Good to know. Well, good thing it's only an armored cruiser. 
Granted, the Austrian Navy doesn't really have a lot to begin with. So that kind of sucks. The Italian Navy is going to be the Gallipoli force, though? Really? Huh. Well, I guess we'll see what happens. Fucking A. Ninth Corps, uh, so our troops over here are still suffering attrition losses. I guess I overextended myself there. Man, those Norwegians must really get tired of complaining. 200,000 Welsh miners strike over pay. You go, Welsh miners. You go. Ottoman Empire develops infantry warfare level one. That is great news for us. Because we definitely need better combat effectiveness out of the Ottoman soldiers. All right. Rip to the Austria Austro-Hungarian heavy cruisers. Boom! There they go. Man, the entire Italian Navy must be uh, concentrated off the uh, Dardanelles. Wow, those Russian subs are pretty effective there. Meanwhile, the Russian fleet is moving into the Baltic. Bye-bye Russian seaplane tender, though. At least we got that. I still don't know why Strategic Command allows surrounded troops to be reinforced. That seems a little bit weird to me. Maybe it's something to do with gameplay balancing. I don't know, but it's always struck me as odd. And it's in that way in every Strategic Command game. Russians have a pretty strong force on the Caucasus. Oh, shit! A Russian Dreadnought is attacking our battlecruiser, the... the uh, ex Goban. There's no airdrops in World War One, P. Warner. And even if it, even in World War Two, you never would get substantial reinforcements. You're not going to reinforce an army corps via airdrops to the tune of like fifty percent. Okay, air actions across the front. The Russians have a surprising number of aircraft, I've noticed. British troops attack out of Sedan and fail. French troops also attack out of Sedan and fail. Meanwhile, we've got this salient near Nancy that they're trying to reduce. They're doing no damage so far. Our artillery support has been effective. The Ottoman troops there on the northern coast of the Med actually, or I guess southern Med, but northern Sinai actually did pretty well for themselves there. So those troops did a lot better this turn. Good for them. Get their spirits up. A lot of fighting in the Caucasus. Okay, you're going to put another unit there in that salient? By all means, keep doing that. I need to pull that Ottoman battlecruiser back to, uh, to Constantinople. Got to bolt on some new iron plates. The French ace, Georges Gunmar, gains his first kill over the Western Front. How's he an ace if he gains his first kill?
I don't know if uh, Germany would have won World War I if they had focused on Russia first. I'm not really sure on that. All right, everyone, that's going to do it for this episode of Strategic Command World War I. The war is going well still. Uh, we're holding the line in the Sinai, although things look a little bit dicey there. The Russian fleet in the Baltic has been, uh, sorry, the Russian fleet in the Black Sea has been engaged. And all around, I think things are going pretty well for us as we continue driving east on the Russian front. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this episode up here. Until next time, as always, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I'm out.